Hi, I'm Pauline Broomhead, I'm the Chief Executive of the Foundation for Social Improvement and here we are today on day three of Small Charity Week right in the heart of Westminster for Policy Day. Policy Day, really important day of Small Charity Week. It's the day when small charities get to amplify their voices, make their concerns heard to policymakers who are at the centre of government. This is a world of very big complexity and change, which is why the small charity sector needs support, it needs advocacy, which is why organisations like FSI are, are so important and have my support. So thank you for being here. Congratulations on what you do. Thank you for what you do. We are embarking um, our party on a sort of policy review, looking at the role of charities um, in the delivery of um, public services, and also thinking um, through what I suppose is the essential question um, for my particular uh, role in terms of charities, thinking through how charities will be funded um, uh, in, uh, in the longer term. So let's describe the... We've been with Nick Hurd, the Minister for Civil Society. We've been with Gareth Thomas, the Shadow Minister for Civil Society. And, you know, we've been meeting lots of people who are really interested in developing policy in the UK. We're hoping, really, I think, to get a fuller understanding of how the government is relating um, to charities of our sort of size, to do a little bit of networking, and to find ways in which we can enable worldwide volunteering, which is, we believe, already punching above its weight to get a much higher national profile. We've met. We might be able to, to help each other. We, we've um, found that there's a common ground between our charities, so we, there's a partnership been forged in the last 10 minutes, potentially. So um, just from that perspective alone, it's, it's an enormously beneficial concept. I'm here today at the invitation of Stephanie, one of my constituents, who runs Karmic Angels, a fantastic small charity that works with families and children in Gambia, in Africa. For small charities, I think how our MPs can help us in Small Charity Week and Policy Week to getting us more involved with media, television, that would be fantastic. The more people that know, the more people that speak about it, the more people that will understand what we're trying to do here. There's a lot of noise and a lot of great activity out there. The idea behind the index is to try and give some concert to that noise and give some focus as well to allow people to be clear about the calls to action that we're after as well because we don't have the access that big charity or big business has but together with some focus and some decent metrics which the, the index is designed to give us in a rigorous fashion hopefully we'll be able to set that out. I think if you just press on that left mouse there it should happen. There you go. There we go. That's it. It's launched. <laughs> This is a really important part of Small Charity Week, Policy Day, because the policies that are made and the way that they're made and the decisions that are taken affect small charities on the ground when they're doing their work with local people about local issues and local causes. If small charities don't have their voice at the beginning of this process, then they won't be heard at the end of it. One of the points from today is when we talk about charities, we often think about the NSPCC and Oxfam, the big charities, and they do brilliant work. But in communities like mine, a big difference is often made by small local charities that do fantastic work as well. They need support, uh, and some of them need help from the local authorities, you know, if it's, if it's giving them somewhere to have meetings. Um, they need help sometimes with fundraising. Um, just so they can keep going, because I don't think I don't think volunteers should be out of pocket. We've had Nick Hurd here. Uh, he, he's a popular minister doing doing good things, but we need he needs to with all his colleagues. He needs to ensure that the charity sector uh, gets a fair share, even in these difficult times. The local authorities have had to cut back on their grant support for a lot of local charities. So central government becomes important in the things that it can do. It's a great place to, to meet new people, exchange ideas and actually gain a bit of confidence that you're on the right track maybe. Yeah? Here we are today, halfway through Small Charity Week, but there's lots more to come. Tomorrow, Volunteering Day. Volunteer in a, to a, with a charity near you. And if you don't know anything about volunteering, get onto the website and check out volunteering on our website. Friday, Fundraising Day, very important for small charities. If a small charity is listening to this, get out there, do some fundraising. 
if you're the public fundraise for a small charity and really important celebration day on Saturday where we're celebrating the huge impact of small charities across the UK so important there's quite a few differences that small charities week has made to us one of the things we found really useful is with the emails we've been getting there have been toolkits to download and we're actively now trying to use those to actually improve what we do